I was kindly asked yesterday to do an example using my five-step process to creating a predictive model. If you haven't seen that, it's a two-minute video linked in the description below. I'm going to be using data from a design experiment, but I might as easily have been using historical data for this. So I just want to tell the story behind the data so you hopefully can relate to it a little better. So yes, I've made this in paint, and yes, I am weirdly proud of it. Uh, but what it shows is a ball mill, and we can see that stuff goes in through this hatch, and inside the ball mill we have the red particles, and we have the steel balls in gray. And we then rotate this ball mill, and we keep rotating until our red particles have the desired size. And the desired size in this example is 200 nanometer. So what we're going to be determining is how long time do we need to rotate this ball mill to obtain that certain size of 200 nanometer. Let's look at the data. Okay, so here we have the data. So the smart people at the production site have sit down and selected the seven most important factors for this process. And this is just really important to stress that that kind of subject matter knowledge is very key to link to a design of experiment because they have the knowledge to that makes this data make any sense. But let's try and give it a look. So seven factors are have been chosen and I never look at, at the list up here. I, I try to look at the column list to our left and I can, I have my seven factors in a neat little group here and I can open the group and say, I have things like the temperature of the pot, temperature CV, the amount of beads, the amount of pigment, the pressure going in, the pressure going out, and the temperature in the premix. So those are my seven factors that I'm going to be looking at today. I have a distribution header, and you can notice as well that I have tested this at a low setting, a medium setting, and also a high setting. And that is, this, that is true for all my seven factors. If I select let's say the medium temperature for in the pot, which is 42.5, you can also notice that that has been tested at all the different combination of the other six factors. So what does that mean? Well, that means for the temperature in the CV, you can see that 42.5 has been tested at 7.5, 11.25, and 15, and so on and so forth. And that's really neat and um, because that we, that because because of this we can test for interactions, which is just really important, uh, because things are interacting with each other. But more on that later. I showed you my five-step process to create a model, so let's just try and do it and see what happens. So I go to analyze, fit model, I select my seven factors, I go to, I make sure that this is empty to begin with. So I select my seven factors, I go to macro, response surface. You see that now this list is longer than my other video, but we're okay with that. Uh, this is just all the main effects, all the interactions, all the curvature effects that I can think of with these seven factors. I take my time to 200 nanometer and select that up to RY. I ensure that personality is in stepwise. I press run. And again, I'm just gonna go with the basic, the standard uh, setting here. I'm not gonna change anything. Um, if you wish for me to understand, uh, explain different stopping rules, give me a comment. Um, but I'm just gonna press go. And see, this list is the same that we were looking at just before. It's all my main effects, all my entry actions, and all my curvature effects. And when I hit go, jump will try and figure out which of these are significant and makes me do less work. I love that. Um, so now that the jump is done, I press make model. I see that this list is now reduced. I ensure that emphasis is on effect screening. I press run. I notice that all of these are not below 0.05, which is like the rule of thumb. This one is on 20, 21. So I'm just going to press remove on that one. This was 13, remove, and I'm not removing this one because it has a hat. And the reason it has a hat, I don't know if it's called a hat, but it's my name for it, like this one, um, is because it's also in a another term 
higher up. So you see percent beads is also there in a curvature effect and also there in an interaction effect. So we're not supposed to be removing the main effect as long as it is in other effects higher up. Okay, I'm done. This one is just borderlining, but I'm gonna keep it there. And what then? Well, we scroll down and we see now we have this kind of profiler. If you are unsure of how the profiler works, I have a three minute video specifically explaining that. But now, like we're happy, our approach was to try and find a minimum time. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to set temperature as high as possible. We can see that has a negative correlation. So you see that it's very dramatic. If we roll that at temperature 35, we have a time of eight hours, almost nine. And if we go with the high temperature, we have a time of three. That's we're cutting six hours of process time for this at this one alone. And the other one is not as dramatic, but again, we want this one to be around there. And I, I don't need to do this myself. I just go there, optimize and desirability, maximize desirability, jump find the best combination and the time should be 2.3 hours. So what do we do now? Well, we go back to production, we make a run with the new setting, which is which you can see here, and we validate that that is, gives us the time that this model tells us it does. That's it. You see, I used my five-step process to create a predictive model using Jump. You see, it worked out fine with this design of experiment data, did I use a term that you're unfamiliar with that you want me to cover in greater detail? Uh, are there any of these steps you want me to, to go on a little slower and explain what's happening? Um, give me a comment in the, in the, give me a comment in the comment section and hit me up on LinkedIn. I'm here to help. So again, thanks for watching. Give it a like, give it a subscribe if you want more of this content and uh, see you in the next one.